Hi, good afternoon. Um, welcome to this Composite and Yoskant webinar on the detailed design for carbon rudders and metal keels. My name is Lorenzo Bossi. I'm the sales and marketing manager here at Composite. And today with me is uh, Jonathan Evans, our application engineer. Hello, everyone. So today what we are covering is the third of uh, four webinars uh, that you can see displayed now. And uh, as mentioned earlier, the uh, key topic is the detailed designs of some of the uh, marine components, um, which are part of the vessels, but not necessarily part of the scanning activities. We start at the beginning of the month with an introduction to composite and not scan uh, for the, um, the main activities that you run in composite and also the scanning reports. Uh, we looked at how to create and model some of the vessel structures, such as scale structure or engine girders. Today, we'll be focusing on the detailed design of some of those components. And we'll conclude at the end of this month, so next uh, Thursday, with uh, what we define advanced design, uh, where we have components such as bulkheads and uh, penetration reinforcements with very complex uh, layouts and so on. If you missed any of the previous webinars, uh, they are all recorded and available from the Composite uh, website under the training and support uh, section. You will also be able to uh, download and review some of the deliverables that have been created, such as bill of materials, scantling reports, um, laminate tables, uh, material tables, and so on. So today's uh, agenda for the webinar is to provide an introduction to Composite. Uh, we'll uh, briefly list the, the main modules. Today we really want to focus on the live demonstration aspects of uh, the design uh, with uh, particular attention given to the carbon rudder and just an highlight of uh, metal kills. Uh, we'll also highlight some of the options available for automated reporting of uh, the data in Composite. At the end of the demonstration, we'll keep a few minutes for question and answers. Um, you're welcome to um, type any question you may, you may have. At any point during the presentation, just type them into the questions panel on the right-hand side of your screen. OK, so for an introduction to the capabilities and the environment of Composite, um, Composite is an integrated platform which allows you to define projects and vessels within those projects or anything else. It allows also you to um, search and select materials, build and analyze laminates, and also perform um, 3D, 2D, 3D engineering um, and also scantling activities. The platform allows you also to uh, create a number of automated reports. We mentioned scantling reports, section reports, um, laminate tables or laminate sections. Uh, and also a summary or detailed bit of materials for all of the components um, that you model into Composite, uh, but also supporting addition of uh, external elements. The suite is composed by a number of uh, modules that interact with each other. And we start from Project Space, which is the project management module. It allows you to create projects and manage the users that have access to those projects. If you are, for example, collaborating with some external consultants, um, you can provide them access to the platform and only limit their access to the specific projects that you are collaborating with them. Composite features company and project specific uh, um, settings, such as safety factors, failure settings, uh, bill of material settings. Those allows you to define a company standard, can be for example, in regards to the safety factor applied to your design, but also to override those um, the same safety factors as needed during the projects uh, if you are, for example, working within different industries such as wind, marine, aerospace, or aviation. Project Space also collects all the data relevant to the materials, plies, and laminates, but also the products, bins, and panels of your vessel. Um, it allows you to manage all the loads and the reports uh, within the same project. CMDB and PlyGen, so CMDB stands for the Composite Material Database, allows you to uh, build your own private uh, and company-wide material library. Uh, also features the additional uh, features for micromechanics and allows you to create new plies um, using some reference material data. 
The materials are stored uh, within the composite environment alongside with all the needed properties for the calculations. It allows you to provide material comparisons to uh, some uh, normalization charts and plots, but also material selection as search by properties or via means of uh, scatter plot for any of the given properties of the materials, cores, fibers, um, adhesive resins, and so on. I mentioned there is a company-wide uh, database of materials and once you have those set up you can just drag and drop them into your project and farther down the line when you're designing laminates, sections, models, uh, you basically are able to uh, just work with the subset of materials that you have selected. Now the CMDB is very much like a database management tool. Um, if you're looking for material data, Composite offers the CMDB add-on, which is a library of 1,250 plus materials that includes um, cores, fibers, adhesive, resins, and also non-composite materials such as woods, plywoods, plastics, and metals. Alongside those are also close to 900 plies, uh, which are fully characterized with all the data needed in order to perform your engineering activities. We opted for an approach which is that of a manufacturing independent data collection. That means that those are characteristic values for a given type of material. We can say, for example, a unidirectional carbon fiber, uh, 200 grams per square meter, uh, fabricated with epoxy and prepreg. All the materials and, and plies are fit for design and FEA. That means that it contains all the properties that are needed in order to perform your engineering activities. And you can take those materials, plies, and laminates how to third-party tools such as native exports for ANSYS, Nastran, Optistrat, or Radius in Altair, but also export uh, the data to Excel or connect uh, them through the API. And with some Python scripting, you can create your own format uh, for your specific tools. So I mentioned earlier the uh, presence of a company-wide and a project uh, library. So as you can see here, my company materials today contains 57 materials. This is what I share with all the users within my company. I have also access to a database of the CS material library, that's the CMDB add-on, which contains uh, 1250 plus, we're searching on a few more at the moment, so close to 500. And then for any of the uh, projects I have, I can drag and drop basically the selected material. It allows me to work with a limited subset down in the models, um, in the modules of Composite. And I can further refine those through any means of selections. I have here adhesive carbons and cores, but you can define them per product or so on. You can also bring in your own uh, material library through um, Excel files, for example, in order to store uh, all your data in a single environment accessible to all the users. Lamina space is the module dedicated to the extended classical laminate theory. It allows you to define uh, your laminate families, including base and sub-laminates. So you can start from a base laminate and have an infinite number of sub-laminates used across, uh, across your product. The tools allows you to review engineering constants, allowables, through thickness shear, sandwich stability, and, load, and perform loads calculations. And recently added also the coefficients of uh, thermal expansion. So laminar space allows you to define simple or extremely complex laminates and also export your laminate tables in a simple Excel format. You can review and store all your laminate data, create uh, automatically detailed reports on the laminates including uh, loads and reserve factor calculations, but you can also export those to um, laminate tables to Excel or export the laminate itself to FEA as mentioned previously. Section space is the two-dimensional and beam modeling tool. It allows you to create, import, or uh, model um, your own two-dimensional two sections that are defined as thin walled or solid sections. And uh, there are basically very easy menus inside the section space allows you to double-click on, um, on any of the sections and basically directly apply the laminates or materials um, that you want to apply on that section to perform your calculations. You can review your section properties and also perform a load capacity analysis, reviewing allowable loads and reserve factors, for example. 
So section space is a very fast uh, two-dimensional and uh, beam modeling tool that allows you to basically design and optimize your sections before even going into the three-dimensional modeling. FE space is the module dedicated to the 3D design and analysis, um, similar to section space, allows you to create, import, or model your own geometries. Um, it also features a finite element modeling and finite element analysis solver uh, with automatic meshing, but also supporting uh, local refinements um, if you need an improved mesh quality. The solver itself allows you to perform linear, backlink, or modern analysis. And what is really key about Composite is stores um, all the analysis job you'll perform um, with the model on the um, Composite environment so that you don't have to look for boundary condition files, results files, geometry model in order to review those results, but everything is basically stored together. FE space also features uh, topology management features and is linked with section space. So we see up today how we start from a section design and then build it into a 3D model. Uh, we can also go back to the section directly from within FE space in order to review and optimize the section that is then updated um, live into the 3D model. Report space is the model dedicated to the automated reporting. It supports uh, standard templates provided by Composite, but also allows you to create your own customized templates. There are integrated reporting features for anything regarding laminates, sections, uh, bill of material generation, scantling reports, um, and the tool allows you to issue and review and revise um, those reports and share them with um, HTML links, for example, or PDF files. Bongen is the tool dedicated to the bill of material, and what it does is basically collects all the information from the materials that you've selected, including the prices, uh, the plies that are used, the laminates that are built, and all the section and the models that are using those uh, materials, plies, and laminates collects all this information to give you an overview or uh, extremely detailed report on all of the quantities of material used. There is also further data in terms of usage and wastage factors of the materials, um, which is uh, calculated according to the manufacturing process um, you select uh, for um, each given material. So, for example, if you have um, a wastage factor of 5% used uh, throughout the fabrication of your products that will be reflected into Bongen and you will see that you have the two values, the engineered value and the um, manufacturing requirements, so with how, many, how much of materials you should buy of. And similar to virtual space, uh, below material can be issued as PDF, HTML files and supports multiple revision. And finally, Yogscant uh, is the uh, scanting tool by Composite. It allows you to, um, to design sailing and motor boats uh, according to ISO and GL uh, guidelines and also features uh, pressure override commands in case you would like to slightly modify those reports to suit um, other standards or other checks. The vessels are managed by topology definition and you have uh, basically user interface driven input of beams and panels, but you can also load them from an Excel file that can be generated, for example, from your CAD model to the CAD model, um, so you can directly import all your beams and panels into Composite. Um, as you'll see, the OSCANT also supports definition of free surfaces and 3D elements, um, so that you can actually bring any of the components that are outside of the scanning requirement within a single vessel management um, topology definition which allows you to keep all the information in the same in the same place. The scanning reports are automated. You have very simple uh, uh, pass or fail checks uh, for each of the uh, components you have and you can dig into the details and uh, basically what it does yeah, at the end of the um, at the end of the process it generates um, ISO or GL formatted uh, report ready for certification um, so you can directly send this one out to the um, governing bodies. Okay, so that was it for the uh, brief introduction to Composite. Uh, now let uh, Jonathan run through the live demonstration uh, starting from the carbon rocket. Thanks Lorenzo. 
Okay, so for those that are, are new to our webinars, I'm just going to run through the capabilities of, of Composite and specifically um, Yachtscan as well. So here we have our vessel. This is a typical vessel, 60-foot yacht. Um, so on this vessel, we can analyze the preliminary design. So this is using Yachtscan to generate laminates for our beams and panels. This is typically what's certified, um, and this is what a Yachtscan report details and generates um, a description of. We then go on to detailed design. So in this example, we're going to use a rudder, but this could be uh, masts, keels, any other structures that you may have within your vessel. We can also go into advanced modeling. So this is, this is what we're going to go into next week. Uh, we can analyze panels with reinforcements. Um, we can analyze anything with with penetrations, any panels. You can import a step file of, of half your vessel and then analyze this under under a certain uh, load conditions. Then from this, uh, Composite creates automatic group, uh, bill of materials, gra grabbing all of the data that we've used to design with and compiling it into one report, um, along with some other reports, laminate reports, section space reports, and yacht scan reports, uh, which is very, um, very quick and easy to do, and very useful for certification bodies to, to really understand your problem and your vessel. So coming on to the, the carbon rudder, this is, uh, these are typical problems that, uh, or steps that we go through when designing rudders. So typically we get section profile of the rudder. This is driven mainly by the hydrodynamics of, of the rudder. So this is, this is fixed. This is what our, our challenges will come from. So getting the right thickness of our stock is, is, uh, is always a little bit of a challenge. Selecting the right materials for use within our rudder, uh, whether it's stiffness or strength driven, we find this out very early in, in the design stage. So this, this drives our material selection. This is where we use CMDB to really understand what our materials are doing, how they're reacting, and how they compare against each other. Then the next step is generally a 2D hull section analysis. So this is where the maximum bending moment is going to occur. And this is where we generate a base laminate definition. So this is very, very easy to do within section space. We can import a DXF or create it in section space manually. And we can apply our laminates, play around with them, and, and understand what kind of thicknesses we can work with, what our max thickness is for manufacturing, and, uh, and really define the starting point of our rudder where we can then taper out the laminate and then do a detailed check on the strength, where it's failing, how it's failing, and is, is it stiff enough. So this is the 3D FE space model. So where does it fail? Is it stiff enough? And what is the cost versus performance? So it's good having a low-cost rudder, but if it's deflecting maybe 5% of the rudder length, is it is it worth that extra that that extra saving of money, or is it worth jumping up to that next modulus? And um, even as a pre-study, so you could compare two different um, carbon modular rudders and understand how they're performing against each other, and then make a call on on the cost of those materials. So how does this look within Composite? So we have our, our project and vessel set up. From our previous webinars, we have this already set up. Um, today we're going to go into a few different uh, products. So you'll see in my projects, I have a few products with my vessels, um, a product with the, the keel and the rudder. And I can mess around with, with the, the safety factors and bomb settings within that. So this is where I have my topology. This is where Lorenzo mentioned that I can set up the structure of my folders where uh, all of my team working on the same vessel can access the same folders. Uh, it's a very neat and tidy way of organizing your work. <clears throat> so the next step is material selection. This is in CMDB. This is where we can compare and, and select and filter out uh, the materials of our choice. And then we can use uh, laminar space to create a laminate definition for our spar caps um, and our shear webs and our blade skins. So it's all in one place. We, when we modify a laminar, we only have to do it once, and it'll update through the rest of the software. 
The next step is, as I said earlier, the 2D section analysis in section space. So this is the first section design um, part of the design analysis. And then one that, once that's okay, we assign our materials and laminates, and we assign this our set, all of our sections to a 3D model in FE space, and also our load case. And then we have a re really quick optimization loop after we've analyzed the results back into laminar space or section space to optimize our design. And then Composite has an automatic updating downstream uh, function. So if we update our laminar, all of the other modules will grab that laminar and update their, their, uh, their results according to this. So once we're finished with our with analysis, we're happy with our strength, we're happy with our weight and our stiffness, we can then generate documentation. So we can generate a bill of materials for our rudder based on our FE model. So let's run through it live. Um, here we have Composite, so this is a, a web-based surface. You can see, as Lorenzo said, we have our modules laid out in the middle from project space. So let's jump into project space. This is where we define our, our product. So we have our active project materials in here. You can see I have a list of, of all the materials I'm using in my, in my vessel. I have a selection of prepreg plies, which I wanted to, I use to compare these materials. And then I have my laminates for, for my different vessels and my different products. So you can see in my boat rudder, I've got my shear webs with a few sub laminates. I've got my, sh my shell with, a sh with one shell laminate, and I've got my spar caps. So this is a few different shell laminates for each of my section. Okay. And then again, I have my beam sections for each of my, each of my components in the boat, my reports, and my products. So this is where I have my, my vessels, as I said earlier. I have a product, which is called a 60-foot sailing yacht, where, in which I have my, my keel and my rudder. Gill is a meta metallic solution and the rudder is a composite solution. But also I could put that within my vessel. So once I've done my, my yacht scan analysis, my beams and my panels, I can then organize my, my FE model, my rudder design, my keel design, my bulkhead designs into this folder. So it's all in a ni nice, tidy, neat place. Okay, so once I've done this, uh, the next step is to choose our materials. So let's jump into CMDB for this. And so I've got all of my materials in here. I'm going to go for pre-break plies. But I've only got a standard modulus carbon in here. Um, I want to maybe have a look at understanding how the high modulus or a, an intermediate modulus fiber will, will compare against the other ones. So for this, I can jump into my CS material library, which is the CMDB add-on. So we've got a list of, of a lot of materials where I can filter these out very easily. Uh, so let's go for a high modulus carbon, uh, 300 gram epoxy prepreg, and I just drag that into my project materials with any data that I've assigned to it. And I also want an intermediate modulus, uh, same weight, so 300 gram, and an epoxy prepreg. Apply. So again, I drag that into my project materials. Okay, so I want to compare these directly against each other. What I'm going to do is create a material selection with these. So if I jump into my project materials, let's get rid of the search. Uh, I can find my materials, so my high modulus, my intermediate modulus, and my standard modulus carbon. And what I can do is I can assign to a selection which I'm going to choose my pre preg plies. And I'm just going to bring these in. You can see uh, only two materials are bought in because I've already had one in there. So in my pre preg plies, I'm going to compare these against each other. So uh, let's choose the three plies we just chose. And so there are a few things we can do with these materials. We can export these to other FE softwares. We can export the material table with the data. We can export them as uh, properties for calculation, which we can use within our, our, our own spreadsheets, or we can just compare them using our scatter plot. So that's what we're going to do. Now I want to compare against tensile modulus, so our stiffness, versus our strength parameters. So 
uh, allowable strains, tensile strain in the 11 direction. So we can see very quickly how they compare against each other. From high modulus to intermediate modulus, there's a quite, a, quite a big jump in strength. So I'm losing a little bit of strength, but you can see that I've, I've gained a lot of stiffness using this high modulus by. But again, high modulus, quite costly. Maybe I'll go for my intermediate modulus in a second step. There are a few other ways to create a material in, in CMDB. So if I go into my project materials, you can see at the bottom here that I have new project material, which is if I have all of the data, I can just simply type it all in uh, to, to this. Or I can I create um, a material using our micromechanical ply generator using our stiffness uh, or creating stiffness properties from our, our fiber type, matrix type, and processing type, and generate our properties directly from that. Or if we have all of our data in an Excel spreadsheet, we can simply import that in the file format and it will just populate your list. So everybody can use your selected materials. If you've got a few guys working on your project and you've got a few materials that you're working with, um, you can put them in a material selection and say, these are the materials that I'm working with, these are live, um, use these materials, and then it's all sorted. There's no confusion about uh, which materials to use. Okay, so the next step after we've selected our materials, we compared our materials, or we've generated our materials, is to create a laminate stack up from this. So for this, we jump into laminar space, where you can see that I have a folder called Boat Rudder, and I have my shear web shell and spar caps. Now I'm going to create a new laminate in here. So a new laminate family within my Boat Rudder, and I'm going to call this um, spar caps or capping, however you go with. Now we can select our fiber type and manufacturing type. This will affect our bill of materials later on. So any factors that you have due to your manufacturing, any offcuts, any uh, resin wastage will be taken directly from these figures. So again, pre-preg plies. I'm going to choose a pre-preg laminate, and it's a carbon laminate as well. OK, so once we've got our laminate, we want to start adding some pliers to this. Uh, so I can select all of the materials that I've got in my CMDB library. So you can see that I had, uh, I'm going to use my intermediate modulus carbon. And there's generally a lot of plies in, in our spark app. So I'm going to use the multiplier tool. So I'm going to put 20 in. So this is going to be our maximum uh, thickness of our, our spark apps. And they're all going to be a zero. So I can add these into the stack. Now, this is the main section, so let's say, for example, I'm thinking ahead, I want to taper these plies systematically. So all I have to do to use the same plies is select a sublaminar, and let's say this is a radius 300, and create a ply. So, for example, I know that this at radius 300, I want to have 15 plies. So I can grab all of these plies and assign it to my sublaminar. And then this makes it really easy. So when you're playing around with your, your capping laminates, you can come back into section space and simply tick or untick the boxes that you need to meet your strength requirements. So a bit of a, a bit of a head planning in laminar space really helps when you're when you're working with with a, a 3D model with lots and lots of sections. So typically, we'd create uh, sublaminates for each of our radius, and then we can save and close. So what Composite does now is it generates um, all of the, the engineering constants, the strength of, of my laminates, and my generic data. So the number of plies, thickness, weight, uh, and cost if I've got one in there. Now I can choose my sublaminate to, to have a look at. So I'm just going to go with our spark caps. This is our main laminate. This is going to be our, our hull bearing. So we can have a look at the engineering constants. So the in-plane constants, flexural constants, um, and maybe D matrices. We can also have a look at the allowables. Um, the allowable strains, in-plane strains, and shear strains, 
along with the allowable bending moment for our, our laminate. Now we can also have a look at through thickness shear, sandwich stability, or analyze the load under this. But typically, um, laminates aren't really analyzed within a rudder in a, in a 1D section. So for this, we're going to jump straight into section space to create a 2D section. So for this, jump into section space, and I'm going to create uh, another section within my boat rudder. And let's call this hull bearing. And we're going to create a thin wall section. OK, so once it's loaded, we can then generate our geometry. We can either import it using a DXF. Um, we can also generate it using geometry from a template. So this creates um, a selection of, of beams, so C-beam, L-flange, hollow rectangular, or I-beams. These are all created parametrically. Or we can use our airfoil generator. So what we can do is we can use um, either XY coordinate points, um, or we can use our, our NACA 4 digit uh, generator to generate our foil shape, where then we can create a length and it will generate your um, your profile for you, which in which you can you can define your stock. So let's do this. I'm going to create a NACA 0, 0 1, 2. Uh, We can bring this in. Okay, so this is, this is a, a meter in chord. I can scale this down as I need to. So there are a few functions within um, section space where we can duplicate, translate, rotate, mirror, and scale the sections. So if we're creating a lot of sections, we can copy it and then scale it down as we need to. Now in here, I can use this as a template. So what I can do is I can create a polyline using the sections. So this is going to be my spark app. And then I can create uh, a layered section element. So once I've done this, I can mirror it around the center line. So create a layered section element. And I'm going to use my polyline and apply my, my laminate family to this. I can also apply a material directly from CMDB. But this kind of doesn't allow me to, to really integrate it with the rest of the of the sections. So I'm going to choose my laminate family. Uh, where was it? Spark apps underscore two. And let's go for spark apps. And we can add this in. So this is directly linked with, with laminar space. You can see if I tick on this, I'll click on this small pencil, I can change the sub laminate, which will just update the ticks. You can see that I only have 16 plies and my radius 300. So let's change this back. And every time you update a sub laminate, it will bring in the new ticks and become fully automated when you change something in laminar space. OK, that's save and close. OK, so this is a bit thin. I, I maybe got the, the dimensions of this a little bit wrong, but the, the, uh, the main thing is, is the way that you work with it. So what we can do now is uh, we can mirror this. Uh, so if we hide uh, this one, I'm just going to delete it, and we can mirror this around um, around a coordinate system. So we can use our Y for our global, and then we can link these together so we can choose the same Spark apps. Now. What we can also do is we can also change the offset type. So I'm going to change this to the top. So then when I have my, oops, wrong way. But I can I can play around with the way that it's offset from from my line. And then we can create our shear waves exactly the same way, typically like this. And we can assign our different laminate to this. For example, our shear waves with our biaxial blights. Now. Let's jump into another section. Let's jump into section two. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, so this is this is a previous um, rudder section that I've used in my FE model. You can see that it's fairly basic. Um, the main the main concern I had about this was I have my maximum bending moment at the whole bottom bearing. I need to be sure that the laminate that I have there is going to take it. So from my calculations, from my ISO standards, I have applied a maximum bending moment um, directly to this section, so I'm sure that this is the worst case on the blade uh, in terms of loading. I can apply that and check that it's okay, and I can make sure that my reserve factor is above 1, so maybe 1.1, because uh, with rudders we want it to fail below the hull, so we don't damage the integrity of the hull. So I can play around with, with the laminate on this. If I'm okay, um, then let's have a look at the reserve factor results. So I want to go with fiber results because this is an ultimate ultimate load. So I'm 1.035. I'd, I'd be happy with a bit more. So what I can do is I can right click, edit my laminate family, and add a few more plies in. So I'm going to do this manually. The other way to do it would be, as I showed earlier, to then select your new sub-laminate um, once you've updated it in laminar space. Okay, so it's a little bit thicker now. Uh, we can then run this again, calculate it. You can see it only takes a few seconds to generate the results. So we can see, okay, 1.08, I'm getting closer, I still need a few more plies. But it's very quickly to understand, once you've got a load at one section, you can then go through it systematically and, and generate loads and sections for each, each part of your blade. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with my lamina and I've generated all of my sections. As you can see here in the tree, I've got seven, eight sections in here, um, which I then need to put into a 3D model. So once we're going from 2D to 3D, we need to jump into FE space. So let's do that now. I can jump back to my home screen and jump into FE space. So again, same topology as we had before. Uh, I can jump into my rudder design. And I have my rudder here. So it's broken down into a few sections. Uh, personally, I would do a few more sections just to make it a bit more detailed and understand the results a little bit more. But for now, uh, this is a preliminary analysis working out the kind of the thickness of laminates that I need in my whole section. So, I mean, the length, the geometry, and the loads are, are spot on. This is all I need at the moment. I can then go on to create a, a more detailed model um, later on in the project. So creating a 3D geometry is quite simple. You can either use our, our tools using points and lines, or if you have a 3D model, what I did was I created um, a 3D line and then imported that because my rudder profile was a bit curved. Uh, we can import curved lines or you can create splines, arcs, um, polylines within, within FE space. And then all I did was simply uh, assign each of my beams to my sections that I've generated earlier. I'm pretty confident on, on the section properties because I've already done some analysis to it. Uh, it's just checking the flexion and the strength overall is, is what I'm really interested in. So in my loads and boundary conditions, I can use um, I can set up my individual boundary conditions and loads. So my point boundary conditions, these are simply supported at the hull and the, and the deck bearings, as you can see here. So this is not just applicable to rudder design. So we could use this in, in mast design, any bulkhead design. If we've got um, any pillars, we can, we can really use FE space to use to calculate uh, the strength and deflection of our beams. And then I've got a line load. So based on the profile of your of your rudder, you can apply different loads to, to each section. So you can see that it's decreasing as it goes down just because of the geometry of my rudder and the center of pressure is, is slightly higher than above than the center line. 
So this is the first iteration. What I can do is I can create a load case with my ultimate bending. So this is using my boundary conditions and the loads I've just created. And I can send this off to be calculated to our server. So exactly the same as in section space. It's very quick to send one off to the server. It takes about seven to 10 seconds to calculate and then we'll, uh, we'll load the results for you. Okay, there it goes. So again, you can see it's in the tree. Uh, I've got a, a few previous results which I've played with earlier. Um, just playing around with the laminates. You can see that it doesn't take very long at all compared to an advanced FE model where that may take a bit longer. So it brings up my, my nodal results, my deflection and displacements. But I'm going to ignore this at the moment. I just want to understand the strength check. So I can jump into the reserve factor of my beam and understand the global minimum reserve factor of, of my model. And it just takes a few seconds to calculate. Okay, so it's taken a few, more than a few seconds. I think my internet's a bit dodgy. But you can see here that I've got uh, my different failure sets and my different failure types. I can choose uh, minimum or fiber or resin, resin shear. So I can really tune the results. You can also see that I can search by beam, structural group, or section. So if I'm interested in one section that I've used on a few different lines uh, or beam sections, uh, I can really have a look and delve into into the maximum loads that each of those sections is going to see. Okay, I'm going to kill this, so let's refresh, and then we can bring up previous result. So my one at 11.33, I know this has got my reserve factor results in. I haven't changed the laminate since, since then. Okay, so let's jump into our reserve factor beam. And you can see directly that I have my minimum reserve factor here. It tells me what it is and how it's failing. So this is uh, across the fiber tensile resin. Okay, third time lucky. Okay, so let's imagine I've done that already. Uh, what I can then do is I can review my sections directly from FE space. So if I go into my section properties, you can see that this is directly linked with with uh, section space. I can then jump into section space through FE space and then play around with a number of plies, either with my sublaminates or using just the ticks, uh, adding a few plies using CMD, CMDV materials, or play around with the width or the height of, of my laminate. So if I've discussed with a naval architect and he's happy for me to go a little bit thicker, I can add this on and then it's a really quick iteration loop back in. Now what it also does is it brings in a, a load for you, so that load that you've calculated will come in in your shear forces and your bending moments, which you can then calculate and analyze within here. So exactly the same as I did before, I can just calculate my, my load and do a quick iteration on the number of plies uh, the orientation of the fibers or, or the, the geometry of my section. Now this is very quick to do um, within section space and then we can go back into FE space to save, um, save our section and then update and calculate our section again or our, our model again. Okay. 
So we're happy with our design, we're happy with the materials, we're happy with the laminates. Uh, the next step is to, is to create a bond, so the owner wants to know how heavy our rudder is going to be. It's very easy to use this data within, within this FE model to, to get a bill of materials out. So if we save our model, we can jump into BombGen to bring all of that material data, all of those quantities and weights directly in. So uh, it's a kill design. We can show our bill of materials. And we have a few different products in here. So if I click on my rudder, this will then give me a design area for our unidirectional plies. This will give me an area for our biaxial plies um, as designed and total area. So this is including usage and wastage factors. So any offcuts that we may have for our plies from, from the tapered geometry, any plies that we have to taper, you may lose a bit of material from that. Uh, and any resin, resin loss or resin gain that you may have from, from the materials that you're using. Um, so we have our materials in here. We can generate a, a laminate table or material table from this. We can also add manual elements in. So if we have additional reinforcement, say, in our shell laminate, we can then add that in. So we have UD plies at the end of our, our stock to carry the load into the shell. We can add this as a reinforcement if we haven't already done within the shell. So I'm going to quick create a quick laminate table, which exports as a as an Excel spreadsheet. It's none of the data there. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go into a different product to show you what it looks like. So if I export a laminate table, let's see what it does. Okay. We're all good. Okay, so you can see uh, in here I have an engine village, so it's exactly the same concept. I have my laminates, which I've defined within laminar space, applied them to a section, and then I've applied a length to this section within FB space, and it's grabbing all of that data, putting it all together, and putting in uh, a designed weight, a thickness of those laminates. And if I scroll down, I have a weight estimate for each of my beams and a material list for all of my plies, cores, whatever materials I've used within that. Okay. So from this, we can generate a bill of materials report, which would basically generate uh, exactly the same as in, in here, but in a, a template report, which you can specify yourself or use one of our templates, modify it, play around with it, put your company logo on, it's up to you to do to do whatever you want with it. So to do this, I can right click on my product and create a bomb gen report, which will bring me into report space. So let's say this is we're jumping off uh, off the subject for now, but this is a kill village, and I'm going to use all components with cost, and we can save this. And it will grab all of that data, format it very tidily, very nicely, to give, for them to you, you to give to your, your customer. Okay. So that is the main workflow within Conversite. Um, you start off in project space to define your, your vessel or product. We then choose our materials create our materials, um, filter out our materials, compare them against each other in CMDB. We then create a stack up and organize our sublaminates and laminates within laminar space. And we can also have a look at the engineering properties of our, of our laminates. We then create a 2D section within section space and then apply this to a 3D model within FE space and then generate a bill of materials and reports within within um, report space and omgen. Now if you get stuck, uh, you've jumped into Conversite for the first time and you're not too sure about what's going on, the first step to do, so if you are going to CMDB and you're not too sure, first thing to do would be to go to tutorials. So this gives you module specific tutorials to run through 
uh, creating materials using PlyGen, creating a layered material, properties for calculation and normalization. So these are specific to each module um, across the whole of Composite. We've got a lot of tutorial videos for you to go through. Or if you have a quick question, where's this button? How do I do this? What would you suggest um, is the best way to approach this problem? Uh, is to go into our Composite chat. So what we can do is we can go into here and type a quick message and we'll, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, this is very live so it pops up on our screens and, and we can really help you uh, very, very quickly. Okay. So let's jump back into the presentation. So we've talked about uh, a composite rudder. There are a few other ways that, that Composite has been used to create quite successful projects. Um, the first is a 116-foot CP yacht. So the whole of this boat was used, was designed using Composite, using yacht scan, using FE space. You can see in the top left I have a, a bulkhead, the main uh, mast bulkhead and the keel village structure around there. We wanted to know how it behaved. This was a very good way of having a preliminary um, structural integrity and, and deflection limits of that. Again, another 100 foot sailing yacht. This is the main sheet structure, so done with beams and grudges. You can see it's done, it's used the whole structure, the longitudinals, and some of, um, some of the transverse beams for, for the combing of, of uh, hatches and panels and also some transverse webs in here which we've, we've defined we want to know um, the type of loads that these are under so it's a very good way of either generating loads or checking a global global assembly so a bit more detailed design which is what we're going to go into next week this was a lifting keel gantry and this was on a 45 foot high performance sailing yacht again all of the structure in this in this boat was used was uh, designed using composite and we have a high-speed power boat, so similar to what we did last week, this, this boat um, has very high, high performance engines, so it had three 400 horsepower engines and does around 45 knots, so it's not, a, it's not an easy structure. And this was done within Composite, it was a very, very um, lightweight boat and this was a high requirement for our customer. Okay, so a bit more detailed design, so this is the analysis of a coach reef or a deck structure um, around the mast to understand kind of the load paths within that. Um, you can see that we just have a shallow panel in there, but we did also apply some beams to that and um, a little bit more extended structure from, from that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Composite has also been used as part of, um, uh, let's say, material manufacturers driven project, um, whereas uh, basically it, automate, it automatically generates a bill of material for uh, sailing yachts and uh, motor boats, uh, just based on a selection of um, carbon or glass fiber, um, C70, T10, uh, PVC, so any of the um, 3A, um, 3A composite materials. Um, so just logging in, selecting the uh, type of vessel, uh, the dimension of the vessel, will output a preliminary uh, bit of material with weights and costs all associated to the selected uh, material technology. If you'd like to see more, it's, uh, it's been recorded as well. Here is the YouTube link, otherwise uh, you're, free to welcome, uh, you're welcome to contact uh, 3A to get access to the platform itself. And finally, just a early um, testimonial from earlier this month, so beginning of July, has been uh, the starting of a collaboration with Hero and Brolic. You can see here that has been uh, adopted within the company in order to accelerate the capabilities to offer the best and most innovative solutions uh, to their customers in terms of um, your design. So what we hope we, we have shown today is that with, uh, with Composite you are able to improve your workflow efficiency. Um, it's a solution that is easily accessible and scalable so it can grow with you, with your company up and down according to the number of users you have. 
Um, there are a number of automated reports and otherwise agile workflows that literally can save days and days of engineering work just on a single project. Um, if we take the example of the um, of the rudder design, the idealization of the model is something that can be done in a couple of days, whereas previously we'll be looking at four to five days of detailed 3D modeling, long analysis times, uh, but actually we get to the same results just using a bit of a smarter approach um, to those very same problems. The um, centralized platform and automated reporting can also improve uh, the quality and consistency of the deliverables so that we are not missing any materials from our below materials, laminates or plies from our laminate tables, or even uh, um, we're issuing the reports that are all in the same standard format so that we are accustomed to, um, to that same format and makes it much easier to review um, before sending it out to the clients. And hopefully all of this reduced, uh, results in reduced uh, project costs, um, which can either well improve your margin or reduce your um, sales price and hence making you more competitive. Just a reminder that uh, the the project uh, we've been showing for the past uh, for the past few weeks um, can be made accessible to you within Composite. So if you would like to have a look at uh, what we've done more in detail, try it for yourself. Um, you can register for a three thirty days free trial. Uh, you just let us know, and we'll share the um, the project directly with you. Um, so you can just duplicate, do anything you'd like with the designs, the materials, um, double check everything, and uh, create uh, create your own designs and benchmark the activities versus what we may be doing today. As John mentioned, uh, the, um, the software is uh, fully supported, so there are a few immediate uh, self-help, let's say, videos uh, can be used as tutorials, um, live chat that uh, helps you to have a quick answer to our relatively simple questions. But you can also review in detail calculation with the knowledge base um, and technical documentation. As part of Composite, we provide uh, dedicated training and engineering services that can uh, help support or complement your activities. Okay, we now have a couple of minutes for question and answers. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to type them on the right hand side of your screen. Um, we'll be able to answer those in a second. So we have the first one that has how do you define your load cases in, in FE space? Good question. So in, in FE space you see, you remember I had a, oh, let's show you. So let's jump into FE space and jump into the rudder. Close these tutorials. Okay, so in the three on the left, you can see I have my loads and boundary conditions folder. And within this, I have a select um, group of, of point boundary conditions, edge boundary conditions, down to loads, line loads, surface loads, accelerations, um, and angular velocities. So if I have my boundary conditions of just, this is my top and, and bottom hole bearing, I should have named it like that to be a bit clearer. Uh, and then I have my line loads, so these are all separate. What I can then do is I can use my load cases to create a new load case. And I only have to generate my loads or my boundary conditions once. So if I want to generate a few different load cases, maybe um, in one load case my my edge of my panel might be might be fully fixed. Um, I can then duplicate my, my old load case and then just swap over the boundary conditions and then calculate it all at the same time. So it doesn't it doesn't really add any time to the to the calculation, but it allows you to give you a few selections and you only have to generate your loads or boundary conditions uh, one time and just pick them out of the list for the other load cases. Okay. Um. Let's see, any other questions? 
I think that will be fine for um, for today. We're also getting close to the um, to the end of the webinar time itself. I think the last uh, what do we have? We have one last slide. Just a reminder for uh, next week webinar: advanced design, bulkheads, and penetration enforcement. Um, so that will be dealing in particular with complex um, startups, um, laminates. Um, really optimization of those um, of those designs and um, whenever you're closing the, um, the go to web in a window there's going to be a small web page opening up um, asking you uh, to please take a minute to fill the very very short survey uh, that will help us to improve the um, quality of the webinar by providing exactly what you ask for. And you also have a chance to ask uh, further questions through the feedback uh, message. Um, okay, so thank you, thank you very much for your attention today. Um, hopefully, we'll uh, see you next week and uh, on uh, CompuSide itself. So, uh, if you'd like to try, remember there's a 30 days free trial that's accessible, that's supported. Um, so, myself and Jonathan are be able to uh, navigate through the, uh, through the project. Thank you again. See you next week. Okay, thank you for your time.